it's Adele from Wendell Woodworks. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that the scroll saw is my very favorite tool. And while I am obsessed with the Pega scroll saw that I now own, I have used several other cheaper scroll saws in the past. They are harder to use and can take some more tinkering with, but if you're willing to put in the time, you'll be able to find success and hopefully enjoyment in your scroll saw. So if you've just started your journey with a scroll saw or if you're thinking about getting one, this video is for you. These are my top five beginner scroll saw tips to help you get started on the right foot and to make sure that your scrolling experience is enjoyable and rewarding. The first tip is choosing the right blade. The type of blade that you use can truly make or break your whole experience with a scroll saw. I actually hated my first scroll saw for years because I didn't even realize that there are more blades out there than the pinned regular blades that it came with. It was always jumpy and aggressive and not fun, but if you're using a good blade, you can cut smoothly and enjoyably. What is a good blade? I actually think this question is worth looking into before you ever begin a cut, and I've done a more in-depth video on this very question, which you can find in the description below. But if you want a scroll saw blade that will not let you down, my very personal favorite is a modified geometry blade by Pegas that I buy from Bear Woods. My typical go-to is a number five, and though you might need a blade that's either bigger or smaller depending on what you're cutting, I think a number five is a great option for just starting out. Remember to always install your blade with the teeth pointed down and keep your blades fresh just for smoother and cleaner cuts. Tip number two is to really master the proper tensioning. Again, I am completely spoiled by my Pegas whose tension is really always set and I never really have to adjust, but this is not the case with most saws. And again, it can really be a make or break issue. If your tension is set too tight or too loose, it can make your blade break or wander off of track or really just make your saw be extra jumpy. Each saw is gonna have a different way of tightening the tension, so make sure you check your saw's manual to learn how to adjust it and what the right setting should be. I've been told that the perfect pitch your blade should make is a C. I don't have perfect pitch, so I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> but with every cut you make, check your tension, make sure it's tight as it is crucial for accurate cuts. Tip number three is mastering the feed rate. The feed rate refers to how fast you move the material through the blade. When you scroll saw, you'll want a hand to apply some pressure down to keep the piece on the table and a hand to steer and to drive your piece through. The saw itself should be doing most of the work. Avoid pushing too hard or faster than the blade is wanting to cut or you'll get rough or even beveled cuts. Instead, let the saw do the work and maintain a steady and smooth feed rate. Most saws let you adjust the speed. If you're starting out, start slow and then move up to what you're comfortable with and practice on scrap pieces to get a feel for the right speed and pressure before working on your actual project. Tip four, safety precautions and dust collection. They usually say safety first, but in this video, I'm making it number four. The scroll saw is actually a pretty safe tool as long as you're paying attention. Just always keep it switched off when you're wanting to make adjustments or change the tension. And the usual spiel is to wear a mask, eye protection and ear protection. If you're gonna choose just one, a mask is really the necessary one, especially if you wanna scroll MDF, which I do a lot. A lot of people get mad that I use MDF because it's toxic, but as long as you have a really good dust mask, which I do, I think it's a great option for scrolling and can make some really cool projects. Invest in a good one, it'll make your lungs happy. I'll put the link to this one down below. And you'll also want your workstation to stay clear of dust so that you can actually see your patterns. A lot of saws already have a dust blower, as mine does, but if it doesn't, invest in one, find a way to keep the dust off your workspace that doesn't involve you having to blow it off yourself, because again, you'll want the mask on. And tip number five is just to start with simple projects. When you're just starting out, it can be really tempting just to dive into some really complex cutting that other people make look really easy on Instagram. But it's best to begin just with some simple patterns that just help you learn the basic techniques of cutting so that you can figure out what blades to use and how to set your tension and let that build your confidence. You can actually find a lot of great beginner tutorials on my channel, including these beginner level puzzle coasters. And remember that practice makes perfect, so don't get discouraged if you discover a challenge along the way. Just keep at it. And as you gain experience, you'll unlock the world of possibilities with your scroll saw. Happy scrolling!